Hello guys, this is PanzerMeister36. In today's video, we're going to be adding some mud effects to our Tiger 1. On this project, I decided to keep things a little more basic, and so I didn't go crazy with my mud effects using a ton of different products. I only ended up using two pigments and one enamel effect for the basic built-up mud, and then I also added a glossy varnished material and some grass effects to just make some more interest in there. But it was really kind of back to basics for me, keeping everything simple and actually ending up with a very, very nice result as you can see here. So if you're a beginner, maybe this will help you out with some fairly straightforward mud effects you can achieve very easily. So let's get started. Like I said, we're going back to basics. So my entire base mud effect is gonna be just these three products here. I have an enamel product here. This is AK Interactive Dark Mud, which is a enamel-based mud effect. As you can see, it's quite dark so it's gonna be good for some nice dark built-up mud effects. And then I also have my standard two pigments. These are from Wilder, and I have Dark European Terrain, which is a lighter, dustier yellow color. And then I have Brown Russian Earth, which is a darker, dirtier color. So these are gonna be used for dust and dirt, respectively. For my paintbrushes, I have nothing special. This is a 1 8 inch angular shader, and this is a number one round, long bristled brush. They're just standard cheap brushes and they're already beat up. That's okay because we're not doing anything very precise today. I begin the mud effects by applying the enamel product into the deepest crevices where I'm going to want the most built up mud and stuff later on. So think about where it's going to build up most and where it's going to stay wet. That's where I apply this product. I don't have to be very precise. I'm just kind of slathering it on in the areas where I want most of my mud effects later on. Areas like over here where we have missing fender sections are also very good for mud effects. Same thing over here. We can apply these uh, enamels to lay out the mud effects we're going to work on later to emphasize the mud that splashed up on these damaged areas of the tank. Now with the enamel effect still wet, I take my darker pigment I begin to apply it using my short brush. I am simply squishing the pigment into the enamel product when the enamel is still wet. This does two things. The enamel product will serve to fix on the pigment so it's not going to come off, and the pigment is going to give the enamel product some texture. So they kind of work together to give us what looks more like mud that has you know, built up muddy texture and stuff in it. Now I take the lighter pigment and I do the same thing, but this is a little bit further away from the darker areas where we apply the enamel. So this color serves more as our transition from the wet dirt into more dry effects. So like I said, this is applied a little bit further away from those areas that have the most built up effect of mud that we applied before. Let's look at this again on the side of the hull here. So I've already applied the enamel, and now I'm applying the darker pigment on top of the enamel to give it the texture and also to darken it up and make it look more muddy. And then now I'm taking the lighter pigment and applying it above those areas, and this serves to give us the dusty effect and also to a little uh, do a little bit of work blending the stark muddy edge. Now it's a little bit more subtle and it looks more natural. I let those effects dry for about an hour and now I'm grabbing more of the enamel effect and I can apply some streaks in areas where I want to emphasize maybe some wet effects having dripped down from the upper areas of the tank. On our tiger here the only area where I really did this was the sides of the hull and most of this is actually hidden but some of the areas on the front here you can see because of the way the track kind of swings down behind the drive sprocket. So I want to add some interest to these areas. Again, I'm still using the same enamel product, but I can do something else with it as well. This is called speckling. I'm simply flicking the paintbrush gently against a skewer to cause some kind of mud spatter effects. Now, if you get a little bit of excess you don't like, you can easily wipe this away with enamel thinner before it dries. 
so that's an easy way to get rid of the excess but you can see I'm just flicking my brush gently against the skewer and you get these really really nice spatter effects and then this is really useful for blending the darker areas into the rest of the tank because you don't want a stark edge the spatter effect looks more natural and kind of diffuses the mud into the rest of the finish as you can see I'm focusing around areas that are actually gonna have mud flicked up so the front and rear of the fenders and areas around the drive sprocket as well if you recall in last week's video we added these nice wet effects to the sides of our tank now we don't have any of that over the effects we've applied now so we should really add that to make the tank look like it has a unified finish I'm gonna be using the same product here this is Wilder Nitroline Murgy Water this is simply an enamel varnish that you're meant to apply to make some wet effects you can also use Tamiya X22 gloss for the same effect but that's an acrylic so you're gonna to want to use acrylic thinner with what I'm using today I'm thinning it here with enamel thinner because I want it to be thin so I can apply it with a brush I've thinned it about 50% with the enamel thinner and I'm simply applying it into some of the areas of dark mud not all of them just some to make a nice wet effect you don't want to overdo this so just pick some of the heaviest mud areas and only apply a little bit in those regions If you're a beginner and you do not have this product I'm using here, you can simply do the same effect, like I said, using something like Tamiya X22 or a similar gloss varnish that you would probably have for spraying on your model before you apply decals or washes or whatever. So you can do the same thing I'm doing now by simply applying that product with a paintbrush. Though you're probably going to want to thin it down with some water or something. If you've ever watched tanks driving around at a reenactment or anything like that, you notice that they do get very, very wet and glossy and greasy. So that's why I always try to add a little bit of this to my models. Don't overdo it. Keep it very subtle. Pick only a couple of little spots where you have the heaviest mud. But a little bit of this effect goes a long way to making your tank look very realistic. Back to the hull sides. Like I showed before, in some areas I applied the enamel effect to make some streaks. I'm also going to do the same thing with the gloss here, and the result is basically you get some nice glossy streaks. All right, now our last step is entirely optional. I mean, everything I did was entirely optional. You can do what you want, but I want to add some grass effects to our tank. So I'm gonna be using this Vallejo Environment Crushed Grass Effect. This is an acrylic and it's basically a paste with some static grass caught up in it. So again, if you wanna make this a little bit easier, you can probably just buy some static grass and then mix that with maybe the enamel we were using before. I'm simply applying this effect to some of the muddy areas and my goal here is to add some more interesting textures. So the pigments we apply to give us some gritty mud texture, this gives us something else which looks like grass. Now it was a little bit green, so I just took some of the pigments we used before and gently dusted over it right away, and that helps to tone it down. So same thing here, apply a little bit of grass, not a lot, a little bit. And then I grab some of the pigment and make it look a little bit more brown because the effect itself in the bottle is quite green looking and it was too green for my liking. I don't usually weather the bottom of my tank at all apart from just painting it black beforehand but I do add a little bit of the grass at the front and back edges of the bottom of the tank. The reason for that is, as you'll see in a second, now when you view the tank from the front, it looks like we've put some mud on the bottom of the tank. So that's pretty easy and effective. 
And there we go. That was very straightforward, very easy, and we have a very nice result, which is always the best combination, isn't it? Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is back to basics for me. This used to always be my muddy procedure. First the dark enamel wash, then the dark pigment, then a dusty pigment, and then you go back with the original enamel effect and make some speckling effects. As you can see there, the result looks amazing. You don't need a ton of crazy products to get nice results in your model. Those three are the basics, and that's all you need really. The grassy effects and the glossy effects are something you can add if you want to. Some people don't like those, and that's fine. You can weather your model how you like. Personally, I think that they add a nice bit of interest to the model when used in moderation. So some grass on the bottom of the jack there, a little bit around the collected area on top of the final drive housing there. You know, it looks interesting. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, I have a cool photo of a Panzer III that's absolutely covered with grass all over the tracks. And it looks kind of weird, but someday I think I want to try making that because it's actually pretty cool. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Next week we will look at the mud effects on the tracks and wheels because that technique is a little bit different. Same products, but we apply them a little bit differently. Currently I think my Tiger looks pretty nice. I had to tailor the mud streaks on the back to match the reference photo. So that was a little bit fun, but if you look on the bottom of the exhaust housing there and the rear of the fenders, you can see what I'm talking about. As always, big thanks to my Patreon supporters. Those guys really helped me out buying the painted products you guys see in these videos. And as usual, after you're done here, go over to Nightshift's channel and check out another video for some more mud effects on his own Tiger 1. As always, I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye and happy modeling.